Far to the west is a land full of incredible natural wonder and rugged wilderness. Today, we journey to a special place and experience one of our greatest adventures yet. Today, we journey to a place worth protecting, Glacier National Park. Towards the end of summer, we all flew to Montana, landing at the Glacier Park International Airport. Once again, the whole crew was reunited for one of our biggest adventures yet. See, we're all friends still. <laughs> From the airport, we drove to a lodge where we'd be staying to rest and recuperate before the big hike ahead. After a day full of flying, we needed some time to wind down and prepare for the trip. Whoa, oh dude, we got couches? After inspecting the room, we grabbed a quick meal at the lodge's restaurant. Then, we went to pick up some snacks for the trail before heading back to our lodge and making the final preparations. Tomorrow, we would leave to hike through the mountains of Glacier National Park. We awoke early at dawn, as we had a decent drive ahead of us before the hike. Outside, everything was peaceful and still. Birds chirped in a brisk mountain air. We loaded up the car with our gear, then headed out. As we drove out, we checked some last minute details about our trail and enjoyed the incredible mountain scenery around us. The morning sun rose as we neared the park and we saw more scenes of incredible mountains and distant verdant hills. As we drove, we passed through some rural towns amidst vast meadows. Suddenly, we saw grazing cattle emerging from the bushes and wandering onto the road. Eventually, we reached our trailhead at the Two Medicine Campground. We unloaded all of our bags and readied our gear for the hike. Before heading out on the trail, we went to check out Two Medicine Lake. So does everyone know the difference between a mountain goat and a bighorn sheep? I didn't know until we I saw don't... some bighorn sheep and I tried to call them bighorn goats. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, don't call me that. <laughs> We made our way to the trailhead, where it was time to review our plans. From the trailhead, we would hike to and camp at the Old Man Lake campground. From there, we would continue on the trail and stay at No Name Lake campground before hiking back out. We continued on the trail, crossing a bridge that passed over calm, clear water. Here, we arrived at the first junction. All right, you guys ready? How you feeling? It says Bear Frequenting Area, Old Man Lake. So we'll be bear, very bear safe and bear aware. Yeah, we gotta make sure that we don't leave Andrew behind like we just did right now. <laughs> Man, during that car ride, part of me was like getting lulled into just being tired, but once you're out in the mountain air, you feel so good and ready to hike. How do you feel? <laughs> it didn't take long for Andrew to spot some interesting plants. In this meadowy area, there's a lot of different berries growing. These ones in particular are called service berries. They're really similar to like blueberries or huckleberries, things of that nature. They're sweet without too much tartness, so it's kind of like a candy. 
It is very much like a blueberry, basically. Mm -hmm. So we also saw some snowberries, which are called that because they have this very white snowy look to them. And these berries, unlike the service berries, are toxic. <laughs> They'll induce vomiting. But apparently Native Americans and also people from Siberia would use this berry in soaps and lotions and things like that. And up ahead, we came across a small group of bighorn sheep grazing on the trail. Those are bighorn. It's easy to confuse bighorn sheep and mountain goats, but mountain goats have those long horns and they're usually white this time of year. Bighorn sheep, they just kind of look like sheep with big horns. <laughs> it's actually interesting. I, I did not expect to see so much wildlife right off the trailhead. <laughs> yeah. In the distance, we saw a calm mountain stream as we hiked higher up in elevation. The further into the trail we got, the more vegetation we saw growing along the trail. So growing among these bushes is some sort of rose. I don't know exactly what species, but they've got these plump red fruits called rose hips. And roses are all edible. There's not really any poisonous versions of it. So I'm going to give this a quick try. It tastes like almost tomato-y in a weird, weird way. It's got a lot of hard seeds though, so. We also saw this fireweed plant and this bearberry, which has been used as food, medicine, and included in smoking mixtures by Native Americans. It's kind of cool. You can see autumn just starting to hit this environment, and you can even smell the pungence of some of the leaves that have fallen, especially from those poplar trees, I think, is what I'm smelling. So here's another common plant that you find throughout the park. It's called bear grass because if you look down here, the leaves look very grassy and they have these big stalks. And earlier in the season, they'll have these poofy white flowers. But this is actually not a grass plant. And even though it's called bear grass, bears actually don't tend to like it. In addition to plants, we heard the chatter of squirrels. Yeah, so I don't know if it's different here or if it changes on the animals, but at least in Colorado right now, it's elk rutting season. And because of that, you want to stay much further away because they're much more aggressive. They try and show off and show their, their value more. So we're seeing that a little bit here with the squirrels at least. Not sure if that translates to other animals. Hopefully we don't find out. <laughs> yeah. This is a bear claw mark. I remember we saw like a big gash in one of the trees in Yellowstone, but this one is definitely one because it's got these parallel marks. Wow. But yeah, you can just see all the sap oozing out and it smells kind of nice, but. <laughs> We were definitely deep into bear country, but we weren't exactly eager to see a bear face to face. But just ahead of the trail, we saw more signs of bears. Bear scat. It looks like they've been eating a lot of these orange berries we keep seeing, which part of some sort of a mountain ash plant. They grow in these orange bunches. There's some all around us, but now to give it a taste. Just <laughs> we continued hiking, taking in the incredible mountain scenery all around us. The beautiful rocky peaks and the vast swaths of coniferous trees were absolutely idyllic and the lush vegetation we kept seeing astounded us as well. I think this is a bit more vegetative than any of us had expected. Probably not gonna stay that way for long, but right now it's actually quite thick. We kept hiking, eventually entering a forest of coniferous trees. A bit further on the trail, we saw a dried up creek bed. The ranger told us that the only water source is gonna be at our campsites, mm -hmm. and this on the map would have been a water source. So right. okay. at some time of year or at some time of rain wetness, this would actually be water. We are camping by a lake, so we should be pretty set. Yeah. Now, the coniferous trees gave way to deciduous trees. This open grove of aspen trees, this is what I love about the West. And especially now that autumn is just hitting, some of the leaves are turning yellow. I don't know what it is. It almost feels artificial. Mm. Like if we went to a place that was des designed to <laughs> show people of the future what a real force was like. <laughs> the weather is like perfect too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I think where that saddle is between these two hills, I think that's where we're going to be heading up tomorrow. No, so I think we're actually going this way. We're going to be going between those two. We're going to go along the left of that range there. Oh. Cause, cause... Ignore everything I said. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> The trail now led us down a bit in elevation, into a wide, meadowed valley.
On either side of us, rocky peaks towered high above, and it was an unbelievably picturesque landscape. Yo, when was the last time we saw these great open meadows with mountains? Yeah, Yellowstone, maybe? It is really cool how the trail just opened up into this. This is like our dream landscape. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> As we made our way through the meadow, we saw meadow plants, like this yarrow plant that had gone to seed, a useful plant for treating cuts and wounds. But of course, the stunning views were what kept our attention most of the time. Uh, this scenery is probably one of the most stunning sceneries I've seen. I mean, <laughs> just <laughs> looking right here and being able to see this, like not even that far from you is just insane to me. It is crazy, we are just like right in this perfect valley between these two mountains. Like a lot of times when you hike through valleys, in my experience, you're still kind of in the mountains and you don't get to like see this vast open meadow, but it makes me feel like I am in Switzerland or something. <laughs> and I'm gonna sing on some hills about the sound of music. I'm a little surprised at how uncrowded the trail is. We saw one group ahead of us, maybe one person passed us. This is like most national parks, if you get out away from the major crowds, like immediately the number of people drops off dramatically. Oh, you know, this is, I think, Dry Fork Creek wow. up ahead. Huh. Bone dry. We actually just went hiking maybe two weeks ago, and that trail also had no water. So this must just be like a really dry time of year, or it's a coincidence. We crossed the stream, arriving in an area with beautiful poplar trees and colorful rocks. You guys know why the rocks are uh, reddish? It's like green and red, kind of. Maybe iron content? Typically, if there's iron content, you'll see splotches of red because mm. of the oxidation. No, I don't know exactly what the difference is, but it's just so striking. It's like, to me, you know when you like watch an old VHS and it's all like green and purple? That's what I feel like right now. <laughs> yeah, you can see it up there too. So yeah, this must just be this area. In this area, we also saw a woolly bear caterpillar scampering across the rocky rubble, and Andrew spotted an interesting fungus. So throughout this meadow, there's all these service berries growing, and there's one here that's affected by this fungus called the cedar apple rust gall, and basically it's a fungus that infects the plant and then it produces all these gross looking orange tendrils that stick out of the berries and spread spores. Those usually affect cedar trees as well as plants related to apples and roses and things like that. We continued on, passing by some poplar trees before coming to an intersection. Oldman Lake Campground, four miles. And then to where we just started, 2.3 miles done so far. And then of course you got the bear frequenting area, Oldman Lake Campground. Could not be more specific than that. <laughs> At the end of our trail, we were initially going to do Upper Two Medicine Campsite, I think. That actually had active bear activity and there was a carcass found of a moose. We wouldn't have had a choice if we wanted to, so. Yeah. 4.1 miles, that's not bad. Yeah. Pretty good progress today. Okay, a little bit of water, that's good. That's pretty encouraging. Indian paintbrush? Yep. Oh, Indian I'm an paintbrush. expert on that Indian paintbrush, boy. <laughs> <laughs> From there, we entered a section of woods. I'm loving how this little patch of pine forest feels right now because even though there's a lot of trees, they're kind of smaller, everything feels open, and the ground is carpeted in these blueberry bushes that are just turning red and yellow, and it's just such a brilliant contrast of color right now. Yeah, it looks like there's more signs of some sort of an animal here. I don't know, what do you think, claw marks or? I don't think it's claw, it looks too broad to be a claw. It looks like rubbing maybe. Yeah, with the antlers. Yeah, yeah an antler, some sort of antlered animal rubbing on this. And up ahead was another interesting sight. So what are all these little leaves that we're surrounded by? I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> are these saplings or? They have these little red clumps on here. We saw them earlier, but since we're in the West, it's like pretty alien to me. We hiked past sections of poplar trees and their pale, smooth bark, as well as some alder trees. The trail now emerged into a grassy hillside where we saw distant mountains. As it went on, it wove through more sections of meadow and forest.
The trail seemed fairly easy and flat, so we checked our GPS to see the terrain ahead. Uh, according to all trails, we're about to hit a sharp climb in a few seconds here. Well, these views will hopefully keep us going because they are amazing. If I'm not mistaken, we're going to be up on that ridge tomorrow. Since we were making decent progress, we were eager to take snack breaks along the trail. We hiked through another portion of the woods before emerging at a beautiful cascading stream. Wow, well, this is awesome. After crossing the stream, we saw that there was a separate path for those riding in on horses. So if you got a horse, you go that way. If you got some feet, you go that way. I'm gonna just jump on Thomas's back and make him be a service animal. <laughs> You know, from all of the pictures that I saw, I did not know this first day was going to be quite so foresty and nice. I thought it would be a lot more exposed up on a hillside or something. I guess that's tomorrow. It's like a goblin forest or something. So as we're kind of starting to get some uphill, we can hear the sounds of a creek below. Uh, according to the map, that is dry fork. And let me tell you, it is not dry. <laughs> Nor a fork. <laughs> Nor, <laughs> exactly. Just ahead on the path, we could see the distant rushing creek and a waterfall. We hiked past the pine trees and fir trees and eventually found a side trail leading to an overlook of the distant falls. At the overlook, the surrealness of the landscape really started to set in. Like, it just hit me that we're out here. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> it's so spectacular. All those pine trees in the distance just look like a painting or something. What's bizarre to me is the rock wall. To me, if I'm not paying attention, I just think that's the sky right there. And then you look up and you see this giant yeah. mound of rock. returned to the main trail and continued hiking. The trees once again gave way to open meadows, which gave us a clear view of the distant mountains. So that super distinct triangular looking one is Flinch Peak. That is gonna be in our view, I believe, as we're camping at Oldman Lake. So Flinch, no. Morgan, McClintock. That's just where the Continental Divide occurs. And so that you can actually take the Continental Divide trail and, and we'll, we'll be on that same route there for a little bit. Most of our attention was caught by the views around us, but we did see a peculiar sight on a tree. So as we were walking past this tree, we thought at first these were like spider webs, but upon closer inspection, they're actually bags, like netted bags. You can tell that they're covering like clumps of pine cones. So I'm wondering if maybe they're to catch like the pine cone seeds so that they can collect them for some reason, like maybe reforestation or something like that. But it's just strange that it's on this one tree alone and all these other ones don't have any. My guess would have been to prevent animals from eating it. But it still just doesn't make sense. It's like, why this one tree? Before we got on this trail, you were asking me, is this gonna be painful or not? And I said, assume pain. And if it's not pain, be pleasantly surprised. And since we have less than two miles left to the campsite, I think we can assume that we have been pleasantly surprised. This has been great. Yeah. Are you feeling the peace right now, Thomas? Yes. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas. Is that okay? Can I? Is that, the right, the is that the right answer? <laughs> As we approached our campsite, we saw more rocky bluffs protruding from the hillside, and the weather began to shift. The sun just went behind all these hazy clouds and it's starting to get a little windy and chilly. Kind of refreshing though. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it's still summer, but we knew ahead of time that it was going to be quite chilly up in these mountains. As long as it doesn't start raining, which probably will in a few days. It's really nice.
Thomas pointed out these holes dug out of the ground and you can even see some of the rubble on this one. Not exactly sure what animal's doing that. I know pikas around here. What is a pika? It's really like a little rodent looking thing. <laughs> because of the fact that there's so much dirt kicked out, you know that it's something that has like legs and then will be kicking the dirt out. I've seen groundhog holes and they're very much like this, like a very prominent hole, tons of dirt at the entrance just because they are constantly kicking it out. From our vantage point here, we could see distant barren rocks and snowfields. We had hiked quite a distance. Wow, hard to imagine that we started all the way back at the beginning of that valley there. Also, is it just me or does it feel like these mountains have gotten super close really quickly? It's that same weird thing where when you're in a mountainous area, the mountains simultaneously look closer and further than they actually are. It's hard to explain. Knowing that we had to climb to the top tomorrow, the mountains still looked pretty far. Thankfully though, we were getting fairly close to our campsite at a decent pace. The chill of the air and the changing colors of the plants, like the bare grass and the red blueberry bushes, hinted at the impending changes in the season. The many vibrant colors of this landscape made its scenery especially breathtaking. But in spite of the amazing views, the trail began climbing uphill. With plenty of time to spare, we decided to take a break and have a snack. We hadn't hiked much, but the mental fatigue was already setting in. Look at this island crunch. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> oh, because it's got pineapples got, in it Yeah, they something? got like pineapples and bananas. Yeah. Oh, no, just want... put the whole thing in there. Okay. Yeah. Just, just in case it spills out. I didn't know if you wanted that flap dangling on it. Why don't you just tear that little bit off, Andrew? That's what I was asking. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I just don't want extra loose pieces right now. I get Andrew. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I already tore that yeah, part off and threw it away at the hotel. <laughs> see, me and Thomas are friends. <laughs> <laughs> Brian did the right thing, but I get you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Friend ended with Thomas. <laughs> it's like. I want a new enemy this trip. Brian, you are my new enemy. <laughs> He's like, Johnny Cage, you will fight me. No. <laughs> you will fight me. That's funny because if we were Mortal Kombat characters, Thomas would a thousand percent be Johnny Cage. <laughs> <laughs> you got the glasses. <laughs> we continued on, hiking across layers of craggy red rock. Across the trail, we received some exciting but unsettling news. So we just passed two people who came from the lake and they said that they saw a bear with some cubs. I didn't hear what they said. Was it at an intersection or something? The first guy we passed said he saw the bears at the junction. Either way, it was black bears, but with the cubs, obviously you want to be extra careful. We now ascended up a steeper hill, which tired us out a bit. Still, we kept an eye out for bears as we trudged along. Thankfully, we were getting pretty close to our campsite. At this point, we probably have less than a half mile of hiking left. We're almost to the final intersection where we'll turn left towards the lake. And at the intersection is where everybody said the bears were frequenting. So we shall see. This uphill is killing me, man. Yeah, this is, I thought I might still be conditioned after Cumberland Gap, but <laughs> clearly that was not the case. I think we can expect something like this tomorrow, but I think what's killing us is we're expecting that junction anytime soon. Yeah, that and is... The uphill has just been constant. <laughs> expectation is the killer of joy. The bear's been busy. Pooping and eating. And then we spotted a bear. A small black bear cub peeking out of the shrubs. Keep talking, keep talking. Yo, yeah. that is a bear. Yeah, let's just keep going. Yeah, let's keep going, move. Let's keep going. Yeah. Don't disturb also. it. Here. Just keep moving. Oh, oh, hey, oh there's one right there. Oh, there's one right there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, Back up. <laughs> stay together, stay together. Let's go. Yo, bear. All right, we'll keep Yo talking. Bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. We don't, we don't Yo have anything to do with it. Yo, bear. Andrew. Yo, bear. Andrew, come on. Yo, bear. Come on. Yo, bear. 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 So, there's the pass. Okay. And then there's uh, the lake. Okay. Reporting the bears were very accurate <laughs> on their yeah. findings. I was right on the junction. Yeah, and there was a little one. Yeah, there was a small one with black fur peeking right over. I saw that one actually 
have, as we were walking by, kind of run off away from us. And there's another that was brown, but I couldn't make out if it was grizzly or not because we were no, trying to. Yeah, that was the mother. Yeah, that was the mother. Yeah. That, was the mother. that was a brown black bear. Yeah, the one of the rangers we talked to also yeah, said that they very may well close this campground tomorrow because of bear activity. And if there were bears just right there, that would make sense. With bear spray in hand, we arrived at the junction just before our campsite. It's no surprise that there were bears here because there are huckleberries growing everywhere here. And we had the service berries earlier, but these ones are huckleberries and they're very plump and juicy and dark colored actually. So, mmm. That tastes like a blueberry pie filling. Like it's so <laughs> soft and sweet. I might even try That is delectable, it. yeah. I'm that is really good. good. Watch mine a little bit. Exactly. Blueberry pie filling. That's exactly what mm. it tastes like. That's actually really good. Mm. So sweet. Yeah. Wow. Good job, Andrew. <laughs> I'm confident that I could eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Just ahead, we arrived at the campground's eating area, where we sat down to debrief. So, let's talk about what just happened. First, we talked with a really, really cool park ranger, and he actually speaks Chinese. He was pretty good. I yeah. understood what he was saying. But he was super cool. He gave us some recommendations of stuff to check out, but also talked about the bears. They said they might even close this campsite after we leave tomorrow yeah. because of that. They're, they're, they're close. They could come over if they wanted to. Yeah. I was not as freaked out as I thought it would be, though. It is kind of surreal when you, like, especially seeing that bear poking its head up. Mm -hmm. It almost, you're like, almost like, is that real or is that fake? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously the initial was like, I was like, oh man. But then, you know, gather your nerves, let's move. And then you kind of see the bear, he's just like chowing down on yeah. the bears. <laughs> you're like, all right, let's just keep going. We saw the cub first. And so when I saw the cub, I'm like, okay, clearly the mother must be around. Mm -hmm. It looked very brown. But because the cub was black, we knew that that was a brown black bear. And if it was a grizzly bear, I'd be a little bit more nervous, but brown black bears, mm -hmm. they're just chilling. It's a balance of being smart and aware and respectful of nature, but also not being so afraid that, you know, you can't enjoy stuff like this without being super paranoid. You're more likely to fall off a trail than get eaten by a bear. <laughs> totally. After that, we hung up our food. There's no messing around out here. Anytime you aren't eating, you have to make sure your food is securely hung to prevent bears from getting to it. We chatted with a fellow hiker named Devin. After we hung our food, he told us the bear had again wandered near the trail. I'm not entirely sure. We'll leave those berries for you. Yeah, we'll be finding the bear, uh, the bears for the berries tonight. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Whoa. Ooh, that sounds like something a little, a little bigger. <laughs> Wonder if that's the, the mom and the cubs. Uh. While watching the bear, it had let out a loud huff a sign that it was stressed or irritated. We hurriedly but calmly left the area and went to set up our campsite. We were definitely all a bit on edge after having two bear sightings in a row and knowing that a mama bear and her cubs were roaming around this area. We decided to head down to the lake to unwind, but first, a bathroom break. So because you have to number one at this latrine so that goats don't lick your pee, we're just all going right now to be safe. And I think if any of us have to go at night, we're going to do a buddy system, carry the bear sprays, obviously. Go ahead, Tommy. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to take this off. <laughs> there is not much room in here. <laughs> that is a beaut. Now, we made our way to the lake. The view of its calm, quiet waters helps aside our adrenaline and put us in a much more peaceful mindset. Yo, this is unbelievable. It's very peaceful, quiet and still water.
Although it was chilly and cloudy, Andrew and Thomas couldn't resist taking a quick dip in the waters of this mountain lake. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right, you ready? Oh, mama. Ooh, yeah, that's very cold. <laughs> <laughs> that is a uh, straight up ice water. Literally. Feels kind of good though. <laughs> Refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> it gets deep real fast here. <laughs> Starting to go numb. <laughs> you guys are making the right decision though. This, <laughs> the refreshingness is not worth the lack of sunlight and having to deal with the cold afterwards. Yeah, because this is not drawing the way that it would in the sun. <laughs> well, I can't feel the jagged peaks of the rocks as I walk on <laughs> them now. It had only been the first day of our trip, but already we had such a variety of experiences. We've been out in the wilderness before, but something about Glacier felt especially rugged, wild, and unique. While we enjoyed the view of the lake, we chatted about our time so far and our plans for tomorrow. It's funny because just before this, we saw another sighting of bears. And so that kind of left us feeling unsettled, but now we're like in this super peaceful, placid lake. <laughs> and I think that's what's so astounding to me since moving to Denver. I've gotten to get to go to a lot of lakes like this, but every time I go, so crowded all the time. And there's only just five of us here. We should soak in how nice this feels right now. Yes. Because it is definitely going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with getting up at like seven, with, right before sunrise, to, yeah. to get as much time in the morning as we can. We're here early enough that it's like, yeah. What it's five o'clock. Oh, yeah. wow. Did anyone bring coffee? Did you bring coffee? No, I didn't bring anything. I brought whole beans. <laughs> oh, you brought your grinder? A grinder. And then my uh, AeroPress. Hopefully they're not sour like ooh, last time. <laughs> Tom's getting triggered already. <laughs> Just kidding. How dare you insult my coffee? <laughs> well, I'm not hungry yet, but I think I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> okay. I'm actually getting a little hungry. Seems but... like a great nap spot. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here. Does anyone else want to sit here with me? Yeah. I, I mean, mean, I'll stay here. No, I'm nap here. Oh, nap here. Okay. Let's sit. Let's all sit. Here. Yeah. 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 Let's, Let's have, have a, a sit. Have a sit. <laughs> 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 all, right. all right. Someone uh, needs to take a kung fu picture with me. <laughs> I demand. This it. seems like a good thing for Brian. After relaxing by the lake, we decided to fill up on water using our new gravity filter. Then, we returned to the eating area to prepare dinner. With the water boiled, we readied our dehydrated meals. Everyone at the eating area was talking about the bears we had seen. I mean, we've camped in bear territory before, but it's never been like this. Where we are, it's mostly black, like black bears. bears yeah. So. Right, right, right. We're never really worried about it. Yeah, yeah. But and that's what he said these guys were, that right. it was black bears, which yeah. is not a big deal. Yeah. They're just going through, what is it? Hyperphasia. Hyperphasia. Yeah. Yeah. Hyperphasia. Oh, hyperphasia. Oh, good too. You gonna try the dog? Watch out, there's a lot of water in this. <laughs> it's like a soup. After eating our food, we put our gravity filter to work, and then hung up all of our scented items once again. The evening sun briefly cast the sky in its orange glow before giving way to dusk. With all of our water filtered, we returned to camp and settled into our tents. It's pretty cozy in here. <sighs> yes, it is. Just so you know, bear spray over here. In case you hear something, what do we do? I don't know. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> we start talking in a normal, normal voice. Okay, well, it is currently 7.58 p.m., I said I was gonna go to bed at 8 p.m. I have two minutes to get to sleep, so it was good knowing you. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Man, I do love the false security of a tent. <laughs> this is like the first time we've done some cozy, colder weather tenting. Yeah, whole year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like. <laughs> well, it's especially true because we went to like Texas in February, so. Yeah. I think we were all a bit nervous after the bear thing, but I am ready to have I'm a good sleep. We're tired. Yeah, it's gonna be a good night of sleep. Yeah. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
but I was very conscious of all the things that were happening outside my tent. I felt like I kept waking up, but based on the stretches of dreams that I had, I think I got decent sleep. <laughs> yeah. I hear every time you sleep in a new spot, your brain keeps itself a little bit awake. Hmm. Just as like, you know, back from when we were all... Hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers, <laughs> yeah. Especially when you feel like you are the hunted. <laughs> Being gathered. <laughs> yeah. It still doesn't feel like the most restful sleep. No. I think I need some water and coffee or something. Mm, yes, well, on to that. But before we could do anything else, a black bear showed up 30 yards from our campsite. We watched out of amazement and caution as we hurriedly packed up our gear. Thankfully, it seemed much more interested in the huckleberries than in us. After we got our gear packed up, we made our way to the food area for breakfast, and Brian and I chatted about our nights. How'd you guys sleep? Um, I don't know if I... Can I answer that after I got the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I slept in two large stents. I got up once when it started raining, and I was like, huh? And I went back to sleep. I had my alarm set for six. And I said, no, I can't do it. I changed it to 6.30 at some point. And then I was like, no, I can't do it. I changed it to 6.50. <laughs> and then finally I said, no, I can't do this. And I turned it off completely. <laughs> and I was like the last one to get up. <laughs> Coffee on the ridge. Just changed a few things around and called it creme brulee. My <laughs> dreams were blended into my sleep so much that I don't know how much I dreamt and how much I slept. Like I literally <laughs> dreamt that Andrew I was like, I'm gonna get out, go out of the tent. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then I've made, I handed him the bear spray in the dream. And then I was just still sleeping. And then I realized like, wait a minute, Andrew's still in the tent. <laughs> and I think the whole night basically, like my dreams were just about being in that tent. <laughs> All I dreamt about was bears. <laughs> now it was time to head out. And we had quite a hike ahead of us. Okay, so the toughest part of the hike is going to be this next section. We're gonna climb all the way up this hill here. Once we get to the top, that should be one of the best views in the entire park, or so we've heard. We came to the junction leading up to the mountain ridge and saw some signs of wildlife. I'm guessing this is some bear trampolage right here. Bears are frequenting this area. Probably came in here to eat more berries and stuff. As we climbed higher, more of the view of Old Man Lake was revealed to us. And up ahead, we saw some of the other hikers that had left camp before us. So two of our neighbors are already way up there. We've only hiked like two inches, but the view's already looking really great. <laughs> We've been to the Rockies before, like in the Tetons and stuff, but these flat layers of red rock are so different from what we saw there. The sun now started peeking through the clouds, shining on the ridges just before Flinch Peak. Along the trail, there were interesting plants. So right now we're still below the tree line, so there's lots of herbaceous vegetation growing, and there's some big leaves growing on the side of the trail, and that belongs to the Angelica family. I think it's something like giant hogweed, or something related to that, which is related to wild carrots as well as poison hemlock. And down here we actually have more of those red berries from that mountain ash that the bears were eating. So over here we also have a thistle plant. Right now there's no stalk or flower, but the leaves, the way they radiate out from this base is super mesmerizing. And thistles, even though they're super prickly, they are actually edible. And in fact, anytime you eat an artichoke, it's a type of thistle that's been domesticated. As more of the incredible vista was revealed to us, we were truly struck by how rugged and awe-inspiring this place was. I really did think that I would never come to places like this. Like I always just figured that this was just for photographs and movies, and I would never actually see it with my own eyeballs. 
This is kind of the place that when we first started backpacking, it was my absolute dream to visit. Yeah, this is the platonic ideal of backpacking. <laughs> <laughs> it's 360 degrees of good views. <laughs> We continued on and Andrew spotted another plant. So this plant here is called fireweed. Right now we can see the last bits of its flowers. Further down the stalk here, there's sort of these little seed pods. Fireweed is really interesting because it has this whole raceme of flowers. They bloom from the bottom to the top. And as they get pollinated, they close up and turn into seed pods. So based on where, how many blooms there are and where they are on the stalk, you can tell how late in the season you are and how close to winter you are. It's also called fireweed because it's really good at colonizing like fresh new land. If there's a wildfire, these are some of the first things to grow on that burnt land. Native Americans and Siberians collect the fresh shoots and actually eat them. And I think I was seeing some of those leaves of that plant lower in elevation, but because we're higher up, we managed to still see some of the flowers blooming. Now, the uphill trudge continued. The trail was incredibly steep, but the morning sun kept our spirits up. Pools of golden light slid across now distant verdant hillsides. And in the other direction of the valley, stunning crepuscular rays pierced the clouds. Despite how much we had seen yesterday, we now felt like we were only at the beginning of an epic fantasy story. The scenery made us feel as though we were living out our childhood dreams of mystical adventures. Along the trail, we saw a chipmunk taking shelter, a fruiting lupine plant, a flowering yarrow, an inconspicuous strawberry plant, and a purple aster. And we saw more signs of bear activity. As we climbed higher, the temperature steadily dropped. Wow, dude. We were so wrong about thinking this uphill would heat us up. It's like, it's just gotten consistently colder even with all the hiking. I almost feel like I need to put both sleeves on. I didn't think I would need gloves, but I could almost use gloves up here. Feels like it's in the 40s maybe. We continued uphill, excited to see what awaited us at the top of the ridge. Clouds swirled above Flinch Peak as sunbeams continued to shine down from above. We still hadn't reached the mountain ridge, but in the distance, we could see even more uphill that awaited us. With switchback after switchback, it seemed like the uphill never ended. So when we were down there, that's when this mountain was deceptively far. But now that we're here, it is deceptively close. Because every time I'm like, oh, this looks like the last one before we're at the top. This actually is the last one. Oh, really? There's no more switchbacks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just after I said that, we had hit three more switchbacks. The trail lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling like... you, I'm telling you, if you look at the trail, there was no switchbacks left. Now that we're up here, I feel safe to say this without jinxing anything, but that was not as bad as I thought it would be. Same. Wow. The view at the top was so absolutely spectacular that we almost couldn't comprehend it. It's like, like it's fake. <laughs> it, it honestly feels like a just tremendous amount of walls. Like these don't even feel like, feel like mountains, they're just walls that are built in place. Every time I've come to the ridge top of a mountain and you get to see the other side, it is like a religious experience. <laughs>
atop the ridge, surrounded by incredible views on either side, we decided it was time for a much deserved break and some warm beverages. I'm gonna make some fresh coffee up here. Some folks might say this is extra, and for those folks, I say you're absolutely right. That's about 30 grams. Put this back on here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the grinder and start grinding. And we're gonna do this for what feels like forever. But that's okay, because we got water boiling over here. Okay, so we have turmeric ginger chai latte. This is from AJ. Thank you, AJ. <laughs> All right, we got our finely grounded coffee grinds here. Stick them right in there. And then try not to spill the boiling hot water on yourself. If you've ever made a French press, this is very similar to a French press, but it also takes that coffee filter aspect and combines that as well. Filter that's been pre-soaked. Dink it, and let's see how this is. Mm. The smell is super strong of ginger, but the taste is more sweet. Mm. How's the coffee? It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Sour. Uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> Welcome to some of this. You wanna try? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> this is good. I think the problem was the, the grounds were too coarse. You know what this is like? This is like that ginger soup that our parents made whenever you were sick. Mm. It's actually ginger tea, but my oh, dad called it ginger no, soup. No, my parents didn't call it that. Ginger tea is really good for sore throats though. Yeah, yeah, he just like boiled the crap out of some ginger. This is way better than that though. Well, that's what I was gonna say is. Yeah, it's mild. It's like that, only it tastes good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fantastic. When you Man. said turmeric and ginger, I actually was not expecting it to be that good. Yeah, it doesn't <clears throat> sound good. No. Mm. Very milky. Yeah, that's delicious. Do you want to try some coffee? <laughs> All right. Honestly, <laughs> it, it is sour, but maybe it's because I'm cold. It's not that bad. <laughs> Brian, you got to say the line. <laughs> oh. It's actually unrelated. I just drank it wrong. <laughs> mm, that'll warm you up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, delicious. After our drinks, we took one last look at the view. Then we headed out. Though we had reached this ridge, we still had much more to hike and the weather was not looking promising. The weather has definitely been flirting with the rain for a while, but we're really starting to feel it now. Right when our most difficult uphill has just begun. Off in the distance, we saw hikers on the opposite ridge. We reached another junction, and the hazy views from here made it feel like we were hiking something like the Inca Trail. I feel like this is the most rugged, wildernessy expedition we've done so far. <laughs> the landscape and the weather were undoubtedly foreboding, but in a reinvigorating way that made us feel ready to face anything that came our way head on. And the first obstacle was an incredibly steep uphill. This is the, the final hurdle. Elevation-wise, this is going to be the toughest part. And that's not a complaint, that's a fact. As Anakin Skywalker said, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> Pretty tough so far, but the trail is nice and smooth at least. A smooth uphill. <laughs> Altitude is affecting my memory, but I feel like I've never experienced something this crazy. <laughs> Thanks to the incredible views, it didn't seem to take us long to reach the next oh. ridge top, where we were once again treated to an amazing sight. Oh my god! Wow, that's just like a whole new world discovered. Woo wee! And the wind—you're just exposed to it immediately as soon as you get up here. Yeah, I guess. That was one good thing about doing the uphill on this side, is it blocked the wind a little bit. <laughs> wow. Oh, jeez. Everything. All the senses. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, uh, I would say this makes up for you not doing Mount Whitney. 
You've had two ridge top moments already. Yeah. Now we're gonna make it a little easy. Woo. Oh man, this is a feeling of elation and li aliveness. I don't think I felt in a while. <laughs> this is great. This is awesome. It's getting so windy up here, I gotta put my hood up just so I can hear you guys. Just keep moving, take advantage of the warmth we have right now. Yeah. From here, the trail leveled out. But there were still a few challenges ahead of us. We are legitimately walking through a cloud right now. And the wind is just slicing at us from this direction. Whoa, it suddenly cleared up. Couldn't see anything yeah. a second ago. Oh, sh okay, back up. All right, grizzly bear. Okay, just keep walking back. Go, go, just go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, don't go too fast. Don't go too fast, don't go too fast. Don't run. So we just saw a grizzly bear on the trail. This is a grizzly. Let's get to the junction. Yeah, okay, don't, don't stop, just keep going. Don't like run though. All right, well. Keep going. That's an added complication. Just keep going. You see it still? Nah. The... He went down, I think. No, that, one? that was absolutely a grizzly because it had the silver fur. Yeah, that was a grizzly. It's like, yeah. set up a telephoto, see if you can see him still. Do you see it go down? I thought I saw him go down as we were going back. I don't see anything from here right now, but... Back at the ridgetop, we took shelter from the wind and discussed what to do next. Yeah, as near as I could tell, it was definitely heading downwards. Yo, bear! There was no question that was a grizzly, right? No, no question. Yeah. All right. It was looking right at us. <laughs> Game plan, just stay as tight as possible. We could like huddle here away from the wind for a minute if we want to give it more time, but I think at this point we're probably good. Yo, yeah, bear. Well, let's just all stick together, have those bear sprays ready. And just, if anyone sees anything, you know, call yeah. it. But don't oh. panic. Do your best not to panic. I want to I wanna move now because the bear is off the trail. Yeah, 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 okay. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Um, other thing, with the bear sprays, if we do have to use it, keep in mind yeah. the wind direction. Yeah. 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 Was this Yo, where we saw it? Yo, bear. Was it basically at the end there earlier? Yeah. Yo, bear. Yo. Bear. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Yeah, he must have gone down this way. A little faster. All right, we got a blind corner up here, so. Yo, yo, ma. Yo, yo, ma. My concern is that the bear might just be turning around and staying on the same trail. There's nothing behind us. No. Except for an amazing view of something. I can't even tell. What is that? Huh. Where did that bear even come from? Oh, walking down this scree? Because it's like, what is there for them to eat up here? I don't know. What would make it want to come up here? All right, there's a, another hiker coming from the other direction. So hopefully they've cleared out any bears up ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we got this side, they got that side. I'm just, where's, like, could we see him? Did he go down? He 100% at least went off the trail down a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, I wasn't sure how far down he went though. I don't know. At this point, we're past it. Wow, look at that mountain. <laughs> All this beauty that we can't appreciate right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're just about up with the other hiker right now. So I guess we're in the clear for now. Not... Yeah, he must have just went somewhere down there. Yeah. Down in that other forest. Do you guys, do you see him too? He was on the trail. Yeah, we, we could have been more than 25 yards away from him. The, the clouds just blew up and right there's a grizzly. We, we saw him go down, but he was definitely back on the trail. And now that we're yeah. gone, he might've gone back on the trail. Cool. But good luck. Yeah, hey, if you guys find a rain cloud blowing around back there, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you lose it in the wind? Oh, yeah, like it was there. The next second I oh, knew man. it was just not there. Where'd you park? Also. Can you believe how lucky we were that the clouds cleared up and we decided to stop to look at that view? And then we turned around and saw it. Like if we had just kept hiking into the fog, like oh, man. it could have been a different story. Right up on a grizzly. Oh, <laughs> That's a great lesson to just always be completely aware. Like, don't get complacent, even if you're up on these rocks above yeah. the tree line. This was the time where I was expecting a nice, easy hike. Yeah. <laughs> and man. Wow. Okay, let's keep moving. Woo! Let's go. Get out there. Dude, with this landscape, like how foreboding and fantastical it is, and the fact that we are literally, like, keeping an eye out for a dangerous predator, we always say that it feels like we're in a fantasy novel, but this actually feels like we're in a fantasy novel.
<laughs> like, just a dragon could come flying through this valley, and we have to yell, yo, dragon, to ward it off. <laughs> yeah. Yo, bear. Yo, bear. Just taking this up. Just Coming taking around the corner. Yo, bear. Yo. yo, bear. Yo. Anyone over here? Yo, bear. Hey, yo, bear. It's nice when you see people ahead of you, oh my God. and you're here, you can see everything in between, you know there's no bears. <laughs> we now approached an outcropping in the trail, which we decided to check out. Wow, this is like the most view yet. I am speechless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny how far we've come. <laughs> Man, look at this, dude. During our time at Glacier so far, we had already lived what felt like a lifetime of adventure. Vast, idyllic meadows, mysterious forests, calm, secluded lakes, sweeping mountain vistas, and more bear encounters than we had ever had before. All of this really hit home, what a special and incredible place this was. A place that holds a deep, rich, cultural and natural history. A place that can provide a new, life-changing outlook on life. After taking in the view, we continued hiking along the narrow mountainside trail. The great thing is that we have a perfect view of the entire trail. <laughs> so any bears that are on the trail, we will see several feet away. I was gonna say miles, but that's probably not even a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I feel like there's like adrenaline coursing through my body because of everything that's happened so far. <laughs> we encountered a bear. The cold, biting wind was in our hair. The amazing views. <laughs> The precarious mountain trail gave us a perfect view of the vast valley below. Being able to climb to the top of these ridges and see the landscape hidden behind towering mountains added to the sense we had of being in a uniquely wondrous place. Eventually, we reached the end of this section of the trail. We took one more look at the valley to our right. Up ahead, we came to Flinch Peak and saw Old Man Lake from another perspective. That's where we camped last night. Woo wee! Oh my god. You know, every place we've been to has its charm, but this is kind of, <laughs> this doesn't take the cake, this is the cake. I've never done anything this cool in my life. <laughs> The trail now wound down to another ridge where we were exposed to violent gales. Ow! My face! <laughs> yeah, it's just right on the top of that ridge there where the wind is going over. Really intense. As intense as it is, I'm loving how flat it is too. Yeah. 
Got a Wait. little bush, some cover. I'm up for a break. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh hey, that's nice. That's nice. Oh man, that was <clears throat> a pretty intense ridge, man. Yeah. It's like hard to put into words just how crazy this whole hike is. <laughs> 360 degrees of incredibleness. Man, you can even see the trail we went up there. Mm -hmm. And the ridge that we were on top. Oh, wow, yeah. Super clearly. What is uh, coursing through everyone's mind right now? <laughs> I'm high alert about everything. <laughs> I feel like I had adrenaline coursing through my body. <laughs> I mean, because the bear, obviously, but also just the, the environment and the cold. Mm. Yeah. This spot right here is just feels like complete relief. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's like amazing how much of a haven this feels like right now. <laughs> oh man. How are those butter snaps? <laughs> oh coffee flavored. <laughs> yeah, let me get a let me get a snap. Ah. My help. <clears throat> My help. Daipuchi. What'd you say? <laughs> no cigar. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think he's trying to say sorry, right? Daibuchi. Doibuchi. Doibuchi. <laughs> Look at those like spires over there. That's yeah, I saw those. <laughs> we enjoyed the view as we rested. The break helped us recuperate physically and also helped us come down a bit from our adrenaline rush. But we still had quite an exhilarating hike ahead of us. This section of the mountain ridge was flatter, but the biting wind was flinging bits of gravel at us, and nearly blowing us off our feet as well. As beautiful as this is, this ridge top is starting to wear out its welcome I'm, <laughs> with all this wind. I'm ready to be among the trees and away from the wind. It's really cold. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's get off. Let's go. Here we go. Woo! Woo! I've only felt wind this intense one other time, and that was on the Timberline Trail. There was a section very similar to this. Extremely intense. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just saw some rocks moving in the wind. <laughs> At least the wind is pushing us into the mountain. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> giddy with disbelief. I think there's so much adrenaline and endorphins coursing through my body that my brain doesn't even know what to do with <laughs> Wow, look at this. I can hear myself think for just a second. The wind died down just a little bit. Oh, God. Okay, we can finally kind of hear ourselves. Whew! My face is numb. Is you guys' face numb too? Everything's numb. <laughs> Only the legs are not numb because <laughs> they've been moving. 
Wind is much less intense here. It's those little where you can see out of both sides, you know? That's where it really gets rough. Whew. This definitely looks like bear scat. It looks like they're bear pooped and it all dribbled down the side of the mountain. Yeah, he was just pooping as he was walking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We continued taking in the incredible views as we hiked and came to an interesting rock formation. What's this? I don't know, but it's amazing how geometric the rocks are. This doesn't look natural. Yeah. That's so interesting. Hey, look at that part there with the little staircase thing. The chair. <laughs> In about half a mile, we'll begin our descent off the ridge. We continued on and the weather started shifting again. Can you feel that sleet? I don't feel it just because I I definitely see snow and sleet flying through the air. That's the oh, thing. Oh, no, here you go, here you go. You oh, yeah, it. there's like. This is hail. Yeah. I remember the lesson I learned from our first time in the Tetons. It was sunny at the trailhead and not five minutes into our hike, it started hailing a bunch. And from that day on, I, I've always knew the lesson that mountain weather is completely unpredictable. And as you can see right now, <laughs> it is sleeting. <laughs> yeah, it's super intermittent. Like it'll just rain for a second and it'll immediately stop. Cause that, the, the sleet's already done. Like there's no more sleet anymore all of a sudden. Even the haze earlier, it was like, it moves through the valley so fast. And it's so clear right now. In an ideal scenario, when it starts hailing, the first thing you want to do is try and get down below tree, layer, tree level as fast as possible. Because you don't know if it's going to be tiny hail or golf ball sized hail. And so you just want to get as much protection as possible. I wouldn't say that this is the most difficult trail we've ever done. Right. But it's definitely been the most unpredictable as far as weather and wildlife goes. It's like, as far as terrain, it's not bad at all. But all the factors combined, it's very intense. Yes. The path continued down the rocky mountainside. Once again, powerful gusts of wind rushed towards us from our exposed flank. The trail eventually made its way over Saddle and the Ridge, back down to the other side of the mountain range. Hopefully once we go over this, we'll be protected from the wind. As we descended the trail, we took in the scenery around us. These giant blocks that are just scattered everywhere. It almost feels like there was an ancient castle here that got blown over by the wind or something. Oh. It's so cool. Yeah, they look man-made. No reprieve from the wind just yet. Is that No Name Lake in the distance? Wow, look at that wall of rock right there. Oh man. Doesn't that just look like a straight up vertical wall? Looks like uh, the wall from Game of Thrones. Yeah. In the distance, we could also see the westernmost part of Two Medicine Lake. Now, we hiked past more strangely geometric boulders and made our way down into the valley. No matter where we hiked, it seemed like there were constant, breathtaking views to be seen on all sides. Wow. <laughs> We descended down the rocky slope, surrounded by incredible mountain peaks. But even with the scenery, I saw something hanging in the bushes. We had found the backpack cover that the hiker we had met at the top of the ridge had mentioned he lost. I found the backpackers, uh, whatever it's called, I can't think right now. It's very wet. <laughs> I have a backup. That looks like the same one. Come it on. is. Might yeah. Be. yeah, same one. I don't know if it's... Yeah, so we passed another guy and he said, if you see my rain fly, it's yours to keep. If you guys find a rain fly blowing around back there, you can have it. He's going to be off in Never Never Land, but man, we found it. That's great. It's like a side quest right there. <laughs> <laughs>
continued descending the rugged mountainside, our tired legs scrambling downhill. The views from this vantage point had been astounding, but we were ready to retreat back into the forested valley and take refuge at the campsite by No Name Lake. The trail made its last few turns toward the ridgetop before winding towards the valley. Here, Andrew saw a peculiar structure built of stone. I almost wonder if this is built as like a shelter from the wind or something. Oh man. Maybe if it like is really raining really badly and you're <laughs> up on this ridge, you can just take shelter here. Right, just put a tarp. Oh, there's something here. Hey, book of people. It's like a guest book. Swan, T, Liam, Brett. Get in here. Get in on you just this. you gotta get you gotta get low. You gotta get low. <laughs> there you go. You wanna get in on this? No. Oh. I wanna go down. <laughs> How is it? It is serene and peaceful. <laughs> it's actually incredible how much less wind there is yeah. down here. <laughs> now we headed towards the valley. Okay, so we finally crested the ridge. The wind is so much more tame over here. I have not heard anything but the sound of my own breathing in the wind in like an hour. <laughs> As we descended, green shrubs and auburn grasses started to poke out from the rocky rubble. As we took in the view of the verdant valley, we talked about the landmarks in front of us. So on the map, that rock wall looking thing, it is a really thin, skinny piece of geology. I'm kind of wondering if like, that was just part, because it juts out so much, if maybe it's more exposed to erosion, and that's what kind of eroded it into this thin, you know, sheer wall kind of structure. Because all the other ones, you've got this kind of sloping, gradual look, but just so much more sheer. On the other side, there's something called Pompelli Pillar. And then that mountain there is Mount Helen. But the wall itself doesn't really have anything. We finally descended below the tree line where small coniferous trees surrounded us on either side. Like returning home after an arduous journey, it felt great to get out of the wind and back into the company of the trees. Amid the trees were striations of brilliantly purple and maroon rock, adding to the many colors of the landscape. Besides the relief from the wind, we were also happy that we were headed downhill on this steep trail. Of course, this comes from my bias of enjoying downhill much more than uphills, but this just seems like so much easier going down this way, and then the way we came up was much more gradual. This is straight up, look at this. It would have been killer going the other way. <laughs> As we hiked, we checked in on our progress so far. We might have maybe between a mile and a mile and a half. This is acceptable. <laughs> we now entered much denser forest. Yo, bear! And the quick change in scenery was definitely striking. How wild is it, the environment that we're in now, as opposed to literally like 15 minutes ago? We were on just barren, windy rocks, and now we're just surrounded by greenery again. It's crazy. Couldn't be more peaceful here. <laughs> yeah. The sun's coming out a little bit. Thank you, Greedo. <laughs> I'm so much happier now. <laughs> and we're close to our campsite too, which is nice. Further up the trail, we saw some signs of wildlife in the area. Thankfully, no bear activity this time. So we just saw some poop on the ground that kind of looks like deer poop almost, and I believe it's bighorn sheep poop. My understanding is that mountain goat poop is a little bit thicker, lumpier kind of, but the little pellets are probably bighorn sheep. We saw some at the very beginning, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That was a lifetime ago. Was that just yesterday? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. With how much we had experienced, Time seemed to have dilated during this trip. Luckily for us though, it didn't take that long for us to get to the junction leading to the campsite. It wasn't much further to the campsite, but first we saw some wildlife in the distance. All right, we got a moose somewhere on the right here. Through the thick shrubs, we could just make out the ears of a cow moose resting a few dozen yards from the trail. We calmly made our way by the moose and approached the turquoise blue waters of No Name Lake. Yo bear, yo moose. Wow. Man, I thought yesterday's lake was amazing. 
Well, it looks like so far we do have the campsite to ourselves. Yeah. Woo! Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh baby. Oh, my God. Oh, mama. Let's see. Oh, my. oh yes. Oh, thank God. 8.35 miles to there. So definitely longer than yesterday and way more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is so good right now. <laughs> Have a quick oh. snack maybe and then once yeah once we get our bearings I think we should definitely set a shelter. Yeah. We're starting to feel a light drizzle, so Tommy and Robbie are gonna hang up the <laughs> food. Oh I am? Isn't that what we just said? No, I was gonna hang up. Well we should have Are you doing the tent? <laughs> yeah, Brian shuts up his tent. Whoever. Okay, I'll hang up the food then, but you're gonna have to take our tents. Why? <laughs> just give us ten more minutes. <laughs> Eight no. Rest for the wicked. After a few tries, we managed to hang up our food bags while the others set up our tents. And just as we got the bags hung up, the mountain weather again changed its mind. The rain clouds dissipated and revealed clear blue skies. I took this moment of reprieve to stretch out my tired legs. Back at the campsite, we were just finishing setting up. Next, we made our way to the lakeshore to enjoy the view. But alas, just as we were settling in and relaxing, it started raining and even thundering. Crom. The hell with you. <laughs> we took shelter from the storm in a nearby grove and talked about our time so far. Yeah, this is maybe the most significant rain we've seen, and this is really not too bad. Yeah, knock on wood. I will say, after having hiked up there, with the rain, you feel so much more secure in the forest. Yeah, yeah. And with your stuff set up, Man. instead of exposed to all the elements. Oh, up there right now with rain and wind. No, thank you. <sighs> Brutal. Well, so far, I'd give both campsites a solid A+. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. have to think about whether they're S tier. Are they S tier? This one would be more S tier than the other one. Yeah, maybe because too many bears. Too many bears. <laughs> <laughs> well, we worked for this campsite today. Yeah. Anticipating the big uphill that we did today, I was kind of anxious and worried about it, but once we were at the top, I was full of elation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was a little worried because I, was, I thought it'd be such a shame if we came all the way out here and I picked a trail that wasn't amazing. This trip, uh, it reminds me a lot of the first trips we took out together to the Tetons and Yellowstone. On the one hand, being out in nature never, it never ceases to amaze, but at the same time, as you get used to things, there are things that maybe don't wow you in the same way as they might have the first time, but that ridgetop view, I think, kind of refreshed that feeling of like being out there in the West for the first time. Yeah, and, I mean, that's up there with those pictures you see of places like out in Sweden and yeah, yeah. the Swiss Alps and yeah. stuff. Each trip we've had this year, I felt like have one upped each other. Or maybe not one up each other, but each one just had their own moment where you're just like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking about that earlier. We went to Big Bend this year, which is all the way at the south of the U.S., Lost Coast all the way at the west, and now Montana all the way at the north. Mm -hmm. And if we want to get really technical, a year ago today, we were on the opposite end yeah. in Maine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as far east as you can get. Yeah, so within the span of a year, we did a counterclockwise <laughs> loop. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Part of the reason why I picked this particular location is because I remember you said like two years ago that Glacier National Park wouldn't even exist. I don't, I didn't know anything about Glacier National Park before then, but I was like, oh man, we got to get on that immediately. Mm. So as soon as we were able to, I was like, yeah, we're going to Glacier. <laughs> <laughs> like the namesake of the park is the glaciers and they think that within a hundred years time, those could just be completely gone. Even if we do everything we can do, it might not be reversible at this point. And it's like this experience. I don't want the future to not have this sort of experience. And obviously the glaciers aren't the only thing that's amazing about this whole place, yeah. but it's like, imagine if we didn't have this park system to protect like this rugged wilderness like this. You take the national parks for granted until you get there and you realize there's no telephone wires, there's no mining equipment, there's no construction equipment. You know, that is, wow. No roads yeah. that are needlessly yeah. built into the side of things just for the sake of having houses up there yeah this is as it was years ago man one of the things as i've gotten older that i've been more conscious of is taking good care of my stuff mm. because you can replace things really easily 
But a lot of times the stuff that you replace it with is just cheap crap. I've gotten more and more into the mindset of, I wanna take good care of the stuff that I think is good. In the same way, it is fantastic that somebody has actually had the foresight to do mm -hmm. that. The rugged wilderness of this is, I think, what makes it feel so special that we're all out here. Like, what sets this experience apart is the fact that we're just out here completely in the wilderness. You can watch it on the screen, but mm -hmm. it is a really intangible feeling that I want to keep safe for the future, mm. you know. Let alone the survival of our species, but also like, <laughs> let's not just survive, let's thrive and have places like this to explore. Yeah. But how exactly do we keep places like Glacier National Park safe in a future already inevitably affected by climate change and environmental destruction? All too often, we're given solutions that put the blame on humankind as a whole and the individual choices that we make. We're told to switch the lights off, use less straws, or bike more. We're told that, if only we stay out of the wilderness, it will stay preserved. But this approach puts the blame on ordinary people, just getting by in life while ignoring acres of deforestation or tons of oil spilling into the oceans that they had nothing to do with. It shames people for living life within the confines of our current society, while excusing those who have a disproportionate impact on our environment. It also views humans as separate from nature, when in reality, we are an integral part of it. This approach has resulted in things like the removal of indigenous people from the parks where they once lived during the park system's checkered past. If we want a better future, one where our climate and environment are healthy, and where we have plenty of wild places for future generations to enjoy, we need to think outside the box. We need to fundamentally rethink how our society is organized. As the afternoon carried on, blue skies were again revealed, and we returned to camp to enjoy some dinner. Ding, 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 ding. Beef stroganoff? Chicken pesto pasta. Chicken and dumplings with vegetables? Good old lasagna. It's pretty liquidy. I should have kept the desiccant in there. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This tastes like hospital food, but not in a bad way. You might want to trade bites? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. this is better. It's like a soup in here. Yeah. Oh, hey, that looks good. Yo, that is delicious. This, this looks great. I'm gonna try this one. Dude! <laughs> that's like something you get at a restaurant. I think that's the best one, actually. Uh, I think mm. chicken dumplings might be the best. I think, can I try it? Yeah. The chicken and dumplings more, has more. more variety in the flavor. It's got the peas and the carrots and, you know, the color. Come on, man. I am always surprised, though, how little you actually need to eat when hiking. You don't need nearly as much as you think you do. I feel like part of it is you just feel way more fulfilled, so the urge to boredom eat is not there. <laughs> I love the ritual of communal meals. <laughs> like, you don't get that very often in your regular life. At least we we don't, don't, because we don't have families. <laughs> One of these days, we gotta eat these, but put it all on a big platter and then cook some big thing of fluffy white rice. <laughs> just eat it family style. <laughs> One thing that makes these particular meals so special is like we're all hungry and we can all appreciate the food equally. Sitting down to eat a communal meal is one thing, but if everyone there is just like so appreciative of the food, mm. it really adds another layer. Yeah, maybe hot pot in the next episode. Mm. It started storming after dinner, so we returned to our tents. And this time we changed up the tent sharing rotation. How you doing, Tommy? Tommy? Who's Tommy? <laughs> Oh, that's cold. Uh, I'm worried it's gonna get cold tonight. What time is it? It's very uh, bright outside. It's uh, not even six o'clock and we're gonna go to bed. With the two of us in one tent, it could be a dangerous combo. <laughs> We've got mutually assured destruction. Right. Me and Brian as a combo are like super clean and organized. <laughs> Everything's very peaceful over here. <laughs> All right, well. We'll see how the rest of the evening goes. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my life together. <laughs> For all we know, there could be sun and rainbow in like 10 minutes. <laughs> as it turned out, it continued to rain, but we stayed dry as we slept through the night in our tents. The next morning, the rain had let up but the sky still seemed unsure about whether it would be clear or remain cloudy. We had all been on the edge about potential wildlife encounters last night. As we packed, 
Brian talked about something he had seen this morning. So when I woke up, I was just like sitting there staring outside of the tent while it was the sun was coming in. And I saw something on my door that I thought was like hair that had got rubbed on the, the tent outside. But it turns out it was just this. <laughs> so I was like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> After we broke camp, we grabbed our scented items and food from the bear hang. The sun was now breaking through the morning haze. We could see the glistening lake and distant mountains from camp. Before leaving, we sat down to prepare breakfast and talk about our nights. So we switched tents last night and I felt really bad for Brian because immediately I became the worst tent neighbor ever. <laughs> I moved literally every 10 minutes. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that the second night of camping is always worse sleeping than the first night? First night you sleep like a baby, and then the second night you sleep like a diseased walrus. <laughs> I haven't noticed that pattern, but this time it was absolutely true for me. I think I was rotisserying in your tent you, a lot. You both were. Robbie was to my right, and Robbie's <laughs> just as loud as if he was in the same tent as me. Oh and man. Andrew was rotisserying too. I was like, it's like, you guys do that, because the more noise you make, the less fewer bears are going to be that are going to be like, ooh. I tried my hardest not to look at the phone and see what time it was. Because I was like, I know we went to bed really early. It's going to be like midnight or something. Like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. The general gauge is when you wake up, how do you feel? And like, I feel pretty rested, but I, yeah. Yeah. it was a long night. Another stipulation for the next upcoming easy trip is that it needs to be hammockable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sleep in my hammock <clears throat> once this year. <laughs> we should also mention it's in the 30s right now. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. haven't. It got very cold. This will warm me up. <laughs> <laughs> I put my kung fu pants over these pants for an extra layer of insulation. <laughs> Today, we'd be having more ginger turmeric chai and a rehydrated breakfast skillet. This is pretty decent. Seemed better yesterday somehow, <laughs> but it's good. After enjoying the chai, the breakfast skillet had finished cooking, so it was time to dig in. Breakfast skillet, courtesy of Ryan Alex Sam and the Doggos. This is like two years old at this point, <clears throat> but that's the beauty of dehydrated meals. <laughs> they age like fine wine. <laughs> Everything with green peppers in it, Reminds me of you guys' parents' house. Yeah, I feel like your mom always had good stuff with <clears throat> green peppers in it. Green pepper is a very distinct flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see which one weighs more. Oh, yours is still heavier. Yeah. Try mine. Huh? Pretty sure ours are the same. But... Oh, yours is lighter, actually. Mm, that's oh, good. He's got the real REI. <clears throat> Where'd you guys get yours at? Amazon. Oh, you got that third party knockoff. <laughs> mm, wow. Ooh. I love a good, like, food mush, you know? <laughs> I love it. After breakfast, we took a bit of time to enjoy the peaceful morning. Then, we grabbed our bags and went to steal one last look at the lake. After that, we hiked out, seeing various signs of both fauna and flora. I'm pretty sure that's a moose footprint right there, which makes sense because this is where a lot of moose like to hang out. But we'll keep our eyes out. So there's lots of berries growing in this area, and thankfully no bears were attracted by them. But these are currants, just like the currants that you might make jam out of. And the leaves usually have this lobed kind of look with these softer, rounder serrations on the leaves. And there's also some other berries growing. So this is an elder bush, and some of the bushes around our campsite have clumps of berries still growing. Most of these have been stripped clean, it looks like, though. 
But yeah, the seasons in the mountains are so weird. Because of the altitude, sometimes they get shifted a little bit later in the year, so there's still berries growing here. Whereas at lower altitudes, you might not find any. Then we made our way out of the campsite back onto the main trail. All right, to the car. Yep, should be smooth sailing from here. The trail now led us through more lush green shrubs nestled beneath the towering spruce and fir trees. We came across a trickling stream as we hiked, and Andrew spotted some edible berries. There's three really similar berries that grow here that are edible to humans. Uh, we already saw the service berries and the huckleberries, but these taller shrubs growing here are blueberry bushes. And if you look closely, all the flowers have been pollinated and they've turned into seed pods, uh, but they haven't quite ripened yet. So even though the huckleberries are in season, there doesn't seem to be any blueberries. Growing in this area is a tree called an alder tree. It has these primitive looking pine cone structures on them. It's not actually a coniferous tree. It's deciduous, so the leaves fall off in the fall. But this is a tree that's actually planted ornamentally out east, but out here and in other alpine regions like in the northeast, uh, it grows natively. In addition to plants, we also saw something high up in the mountains. So Thomas was pointing out that you can see some fresh fallen snow on those distant mountains, and that definitely wasn't there the day before. It's kind of crazy how quickly that accumulated. But beside all the fresh fallen snow, you can also see bits of glaciers and ice patches. Obviously during the summer, they shrink in size as compared to winter, but a lot of times mountain goats will rely on those ice patches in the summertime to cool their body heat and to rest and recuperate. And that's one of the other effects of all that ice shrinking with climate change is that there's less of this cold environment for the mountain goats to use. And so that of course affects the whole balance of the ecosystem. So it's another reason why it's super important to keep places like this and the whole world in general sustainable and safe. We passed by some purple asters and passed through an area with gently flowing streams. Here, I saw some broad-leaved plants. So we saw these plants the other day, and at first I didn't know them. I found out that these are thimble berries. They uh, have all these little different sections on them, kind of like a raspberry, and these are edible. It's a type of bramble, so. Mm. It tastes kind of like slightly sour, not super sweet strawberries if it was like super overripe and mushy, and all the red stuff just kind of melts off of this white part underneath. The darker one, I believe, is more ripe. Oh, it just like came right off. <laughs> oh, really good, really good. Oh, it like comes yeah. off, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so pretty. A lot like a raspberry, but sweeter. Almost like something you'd find in the filling of a Nutrigrain bar. <laughs> <laughs> it comes off like a, like a toupee. <laughs> hmm. There's not much like substance to it, but there's that interesting flavor to it. It's like a cross between a strawberry and a, and a raspberry. I almost caught hints of like grape. Mm -hmm. After sampling the delicious berries, we left the rest for the wildlife and continued on. As we hiked, something in the shrubs caught our attention. Clumps of what looked like fur, which were in fact velvet that had been shed from an animal's antlers ahead of the rutting season. Unrelated, but look at these colors. I feel like this was the perfect transition to the fall season. This view right here is what I pictured when I thought of Glacier National Park. Like, this is it right here. You've got the green, reds, and yellows of all the vegetation, the blues of the mountains with the snow-capped tops. So idyllic. Glacier National Park had been, without a doubt, one of the most incredible places we had ever been. A place that had helped us experience the wilderness as though for the first time again. A place full of wonder, excitement, and impossible beauty. Places like this need to be cherished and protected, not just for the health of our environment, but also because they are places where humans can experience life at its fullest. Where we can live deliberately, experience the bare essentials of existence, and counterintuitively learn to thrive as a result.
But a change in climate means glacier is already at risk of changing forever. As snowfields shrink, riverbeds will diminish, wildlife will lose habitat, and the ecosystem will be thrown out of balance. Not only might we lose our ability to thrive, but our ability to survive may be challenged as well. We prefer a future where we not only protect places like Glacier, but expand the amount of wild, beautiful places that exist on Earth. You turn anywhere here and you see a fantastic view, but we've actually seen like tons of amazing views over the course of this year. And it just makes me wonder, will there ever be a time where I see something and I'm just like, okay, I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. It's funny to think a year ago today, we were starting our drive back to Ohio from Katahdin. This year has been a heck of a year, and this is a heck of a capstone for summer. I wasn't ready for summer to end, but like you said, this is the perfect send off. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we pine for the nostalgic past, mm -hmm. but really the way to experience that in the here and now is to seek out new experiences that give you wonder. I wish I could bottle this feeling up. I know we make videos of our trips, but it still just saddens me a little bit that you can't really fully capture the essence. Because it's more than just what you see, it's what you feel, you know, the people you're with in the moment. There's just so many layers to it. The experiences we have out in nature are ones we want to share with everyone, including future generations. Ensuring we preserve our planet and the wild places we love will take effort on all our parts. And we don't just mean guilting each other into recycling or opting to not use straws. Even when we are able to change our individual habits, we can't stop old growth forests from being cut down, gas from being fracked, or mountaintops from being removed unless we act collectively. We need to think outside the confines of everyday life, to look to the wisdom of indigenous people, to stop seeing humans as inherently opposed to the environment, and to understand how we can integrate wilderness and nature into our lives. Creating a better future, one where Glacier National Park isn't doomed to lose all its glaciers, where our children can grow and enjoy the mountaintops, the calm lakes, and the vibrant forests, will take all of us working together to imagine and build a fundamentally different society, where the needs of everyone and our planet are accounted for, and where people are given the chance not only to survive, but to thrive. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share the video with all your friends and family, and hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like another way to further support us, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com adventure. We've got bloopers, live streams, and early releases of our videos. Thank you so much for checking it out. How are you feeling, Brian? Feeling good. Feeling real good. Feeling hungry. <laughs> this is one of the best I've felt after a hike. <laughs> Maybe ever. Yeah.
<laughs> I can absolutely see why there are myths about deities living on Mount Olympus. Like, when you look at these mountains, it does look like the realm of the gods. Come with me to a tunnel. There's a tunnel? Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of when I was a kid and we were up in Banff and we took a big truck up to the glacier and we're hiking on it. But it's like from here, it's an impressive sight already. But when you're actually like on the glacier, it's kind of incredible how gigantic those are. Never been to one. Same, never. It's as close as I'll ever get. Unless we go to Alaska. Stay tuned. Yeah, holy crap, that valley you is see the incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, get the high line. Oh, yeah, yeah, people okay. hiking up there. Wow, dude, this is crazy. This right. feels like we're on Lake Michigan or something. Except there are gigantic There's, mountains. Yeah. I feel like we've been in every environment and every season you could possibly be in. <laughs> wow. It's like we got every biome. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. <laughs> Why are there not more people here? I mean, I'm fine with it, but this is amazing. <laughs> Well done, well done. Can I get a picture? Yeah. Well done. You sure you don't want to get kicked on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Gas station. The Pex one. They have the same as you. Oh, sweet. They just look too good. The hell one? Yeah, I regret not getting the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese looks so good. It's a Montana beer, right? Mon Montana half. Ooh, that's refreshing. It's good. <laughs> I got the Snow Devil Cider. It didn't say good. Mm. Wow, I that's... I got the mac and cheese. This just tastes like apple juice that's carbonated. Oh, sausages. <laughs> Ooh, it's very... Oh, 
Oh, it's fine. There's a lot of cinnamon in it. Did you get the watermelon? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Grab your spice watermelon. Nice. Oh, this looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Andrew. Look at this, man. Oh, man. <laughs> That's really good. That is a hefty portion, dude. Yeah. Mm. Black and catfish po' boy, it's really good. Barbecue pork oozing out. Mm. Yeah, everybody try one. Try it. How is it? Clear winner. Clear winner. That might be the best mac and cheese I've ever had. We should. Order a sandwich for Brian and just share that. <laughs> All right, I'm for that. Just get another one. Just get another one. All right. yeah. Here. This is spiced watermelon. When you were a kid, did your mom or your parents ever put salt on watermelon? No, but they told us about it. My dad would put salt on watermelon, and then there'd be a bowl of watermelon sitting in the kitchen. And I'd be like, ooh, this is going to be great. I'd take a bite and it had salt on it. And it was just like, <laughs> Probably put like, too much salt or something. <laughs> well, I was a kid. As an adult, you have more a different palate. What is that spice? It's you know. good. A Cajun, adobo kind of spice. Pretty good. In high school, my girlfriend was from Texas and she talked about, I don't know if that is relevant, <laughs> but I assumed it was a Texas thing, but she talked about putting salt on watermelon. I think watermelon is perfect as it is, but let's try this. Mm. I don't know if it's elote or whatever seasoning they put on uh, mangoes down south. That's really good, actually. Well, that's really interesting. It's like, I don't know if it enhances it, but it definitely makes it a different experience. Yeah, yeah. It's got huckleberry barbecue sauce on it. Not bad. He said, watch out for the ceramic plate. It's very hot. Dude, this is such a better deal than everything else. The crumbled, like, au gratin type stuff is so good. The crispy cheese and the crumbly crumbs. <laughs> also, spirals are a way better shape than just elbows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is perfection. This is really good. <laughs> this is the type of thing you hope for in a post-hike meal. Like, you get kind of what we ordered initially, and we're like, ah, that's kind of disappointing. But this... Does that look like a man who's had all he could eat? <laughs> wow, great choice, Andrew. That was, sometimes we have some duds, other times we have some, some good ones. <laughs> what, do you guys want ice cream? <laughs> I, I considered it. Okay. <laughs> wow, look at that sunset. Commander Aquia Giasari, what's your analysis of this planet? Captain Jason Bourgeois, it appears to have an atmosphere composed of 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, 0.8% argon, and 0.2% carbon dioxide. It is a Class M planet. Commander Gavin Ryan, prepare to beam us down. Aye, Captain. Beaming you down now. What do you make of these plants? Do you think they're responsible for poisoning Su and Tan? My analysis of the plants indicates it does contain toxins, including atropine, scopolamine, and jontruitine. Send some samples to Dr. Maryson Cabbage in sickbay immediately. Have it create an antidote. Yes, sir. We'll have to cross this lake if we want to collect more samples. We'll need to use a greatlakewatercrafts.com. Elaine R. Anthony is making the most logical request of asking the drought to be over so that we can see snow-capped mountains in California.
Brian Kitsune would like to say congratulations and best wishes to his wife, Sarah, as she sets on on her new adventure as a middle school teacher. Good afternoon, Mr. Jasper Caparata. It's been a long time. I'd like a tasting. I know you have an appreciation for the German varietals, but I do highly recommend these Expedition Research LLCs. You'll notice that the scope is a precision red dot and the feeding rail is polished to a mirror sheen. There's a vertical grip for extra stability. I'll take both. And what about dessert? Only the finest cutlery. Thank you. And Mr. Caparata, enjoy your party. TS would like to shout out to Adventure Archives and a happy fourth birthday to Liam. And to Nikki, I love you. I'm looking forward to our Ireland trip together. Sanwar One would like to give a happy belated birthday to Xavian and Yavin. Your uncle loves you both dearly. Richard Frangiamore would like to give a shout out to the staff and rangers at Bear Creek Lake State Park in Cumberland, Virginia. Thanks for taking such great care of one of the most beautiful state parks around. Ah, samurai. Have you heard the legend of the six swordsmen of Kojiro? The names are Sung Jin Huang, J. Ramundo, Salvador Gonzalez, Jake Buer, and Leon and Lu Lin. They are led by a seventh samurai, Dan Vulcans. Legend has it that his hat imbues magical powers. Those powers will help me to defeat the Mongols. Thank you. I knew you'd find me, Charlie Joe. We don't have to do this, Dan Vulcans. I'm only trying to defeat the Mongols and their leader, Douglas Jackson. I swore on my honor that we would duel again. I used to get into so much trouble with Brian and Katya Strom. Stealing sake, teasing the other kids, Christina Alvarez and James Rokitsky. Many years have passed since those days. Me and Thomas's shirts are just the epitome of our one-dimensional personalities <laughs> that have year. developed over the last year. <laughs> I got the Bruce Lee shirt, he's got a Golden Retriever shirt. <laughs>